What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're going to be talking about path variable and request body. So in our previous video, we returned a list of Pokemon and it did exactly what we wanted, but a lot of times in our API, we don't want the whole entire list of Pokemon. We want to return a specific Pokemon. Like what if we just wanted to return Squirtle? We couldn't do that with the current API endpoint that we have. So we have this thing called path variable. So in our API URL endpoint, if we just hit this endpoint right here, this is going to be what we get back. We're going to get back this whole list. But like I said, we don't want that. So how would you make it to return a specific Pokemon? All you would do would be you would pass in the ID or the primary key for the actual Pokemon in the list. So if we passed in one here, we would pass it in and we would actually get back Squirtle. And path variable is what allows us to do that. The next is going to be a request body. A request body is going to allow us a lot of times, not in all cases, but in this case, this is what's going to allow us to create Pokemon. We need to be able to add uh, Pokemon to our database because Pokemon, uh, there's new Pokemon coming out and maybe you want to add your own Pokemon that you made up yourself. You're very creative. The way that you would do that is you would add in what's called a request body. And in the request body, what you're going to send to the API, you're going to actually create your own JSON right here and say for instance you want to create another squirtle what you would do is you would send it to this api endpoint and notice that there's no variable right here because it's going to be sent up in the body of the json hence why they call it a request body so let's go ahead in intellij and let's actually start building out this api endpoint it's not complicated at all and what we are going to do is we're going to put in another git mapping. And I'm going to go ahead, close this, pull out my project tab right here. So I've got a git mapping right here. And what we're going to go do is we're going to say Pokemon and put a slash right here. And then we're going to put curly braces where we will pass in our actual ID. So then we go down here, we're going to go public, Pokemon, Pokemon, D uh, we're going to call this Pokemon detail. You can call it whatever you want to, but I'm going to call it a Pokemon detail. And we are going to pass this path variable into our actual method parameters right here. So we go path variable, uh, this is going to be an int, and we're going to pass an ID right here. And very simply, and just like I said, this is just for educational purposes, your re a real API endpoint is going to be more robust, but for just for learning and purposes right now, what we're going to do is we are going to pass in the ID for the first, uh, for the first parameter for our Pokemon constructor. We're going to pass in the uh, name right here. We're going, and this is, uh, this is just a random name. So we're gonna, um, have Squirtle right here. And then Squirtle is going to be a type of water. Let me see. And that should be uh, good enough right there. So let's go ahead into our Postman. And I'm going to rename this. I think it looks better if we rename this. So we're gonna say get all. I'm gonna rename this to get all. I think it looks a little bit better. And then I'm going to create another request. And we're going to say get detail. And once again, it's going to have HTTP. We're going to have local host right here. And make sure that we have our API. And then we're going to pass in Pokemon just like this. And let me make sure. So we're going to go three. And let's just pass in a random number. So let's just pass in five. And this number is going to be passed into our uh, API endpoint right here. It's pretty much going to go into our parameter. Then our actual parameter is going to go into here. 
and we should be able to get the right value back. So let's see here. Um, it says not found. Oh, wait a second. I have to restart the actual uh, API endpoint right here. So I'm going to go ahead and restart it. Go back here and let's go ahead and test it again. So we go test and what you look at that, it returns back and it actually passed in our variable up here and you can watch, it will do the exact same thing. So a good example and a good educational example of how this works. So now let's actually start working on a request body. So let's make an API endpoint. This is going to be a post API endpoint, meaning that when you post, you're sending actual data into the actual body. And that might not make sense right now, but it will make sense here in a little bit. So we're gonna go Pokemon. Then we're going to have make this a create endpoint so that it is unique. You could just call it regular Pokemon if you want to, but I'm going to add a create at the end of it. And I'm gonna go down in here. Let's go public. And I'm going to add a response status. So if the response actually works correctly, we are going to return a HTTP status of created. And if you don't know anything about HTTP statuses, um, you, whenever you are successful at creating a certain um, or a cer a certain API endpoint, or you get a certain piece of data back that is what you want, it's going to return a created status. So go down here and need to bring this in. So I'm gonna go Alt Enter, Import Class, just like this. And we're gonna go here, we'll go Response Entity. So we got Response Entity and we are going to, once again, return just a good old Pokemon from the actual uh, API endpoint. So that is what is going to return. Just remember that all this represents is it, what the actual API endpoint is going to return. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to <clears throat> use our request body. So we've got request body and within our request body, we are going to send up our Pokemon. So cut down here and we're just going to system out and re uh, respond with the actual Pokemon uh, name. So we'll system dot out the Pokemon name we'll go south just like this. And we will return the type. So we'll go Pokemon.get type, just like this. And then, of course, we need to return with our new response entity. And with this one, it's best if we actually go the full nine yards and actually return a response entity with the angle brackets, just like this. And when you return this way, as opposed to the response entity dot, dot OK, the second parameter requires that you return HTTP status dot created. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go ahead into our Postman. I am going to go in here, going to click duplicate and make sure that you make this a post because once again, this is now a post request because we're sending data up into the body. So we go HTTP just like this. Make sure we have our API. And we're going to create and go into your actual, click the body right here, click raw, then go into your JSON and go add some curly brackets. So we have a name, so we'll put name just like this and we will create a new Pokemon called um, Pidgey. Can't believe I just thought of that Pidgey. So Pidgey's a really, not the strongest Pokemon, but Pidgey, good Pokemon nonetheless. Okay, so we go here. Not exactly sure what type of, I think it's an earth Pokemon or like a dirt Pokemon. And we will give this an ID and, oh, actually no, because we are going to be using identity. We don't actually have to put the ID. So let's go ahead. We're going to go post and also need to make sure that I restart the server. Always got to make sure because it needs to refresh. Otherwise, it won't find the endpoint. And then we go into here. We're going to go uh, create. And would you look at that? Also, it system dot out all, both those values as well too. Okay, so we can't just stop there. Now we need to. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to 
create a update and we're going to create a delete request, which is going to be a blend of both of them. A update because you need to have because you need to know the Pokemon, you have to send the actual Pokemon up in the update request, as well as you also can, you don't have to, but you can also send the ID up through the path variable. So we'll go here, and what we're going to do is we're going to go put mapping, we'll have Pokemon, and we'll have the ID right here, and then we will update. So we'll go update, then, oh, spelled update wrong, just like this. And next, we're going to have public response entity. And we are going to, once again, return a Pokemon just like this. Update Pokemon. Then in here, once again, we're going to have, we're going to be using request body and the path variable. We'll go up here, Pokemon. Then we're going to have Pokemon right here. And then we're going to have our path variable. So we have path variable and good measure is to add the ID just like this and we'll have int Pokemon ID. And this is going to declare this variable so that um, it is unique. So we go in here, we'll go system.out. We're going to go Pokemon dot get name. Then we're going to go system.out Pokemon dot get type, just like this. And then we will go return response entity. Um, we can use, I think we could use okay. So we'll use okay. And then we are going to return our actual Pokemon just like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out. Um, I'm going to rename this to create. I'm going to call this one update. Go once again, go in here and Got update right here and go into the JSON, copy this, bring it back into the body. We go raw and make sure set this to JSON because it makes it look pretty. And let's go ahead and see if we can update this. So we go, this is going to be a put. An update is also called a put and it works beautifully. Beautifully. So last one is going to be our delete. And thankfully delete is relatively easy. So what we will do is we will go into here. We're gonna go delete mapping and we're gonna call this Pokemon and have our ID in here. Then we're going to go delete. Next thing, go down here, public response entity, string, and then we'll go delete Pokemon a path variable we'll go id and pokemon id just like this and here south we're gonna have pokemon id then here return response entity dot okay and we will just return pokemon deleted successfully Go down here, deleted successfully. Okay, looking good. So go back here and let's go ahead, duplicate this, duplicate, whatever you want to call it. Okay, uh, we'll call this delete. So delete. And here we can go just change this to delete just like this. Make sure to go ahead and restart the server. Great. So go ahead, put, make sure this is delete and Pokemon deleted successfully. So we've finally uh, built out our whole entire controller here. We are ready to move on to the next phase of our API. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.